previously on Rule Zero. So I want to do something. I want Rolla, you just touched on it. I don't think they know how to write these strong characters again. I want to play a one minute preview that was produced in 1966 for Star Trek. And when you bring up James Tiberius Kirk, there's something really interesting I want to say after this about his character and why it resonates so strongly. And the fact that if you look at the actor that embodied this throughout his career, he really developed it this way. I'm not sure they actually intended for it, but when he did it, he came across uh, in an interesting way. Let me add this to the stream. So 1966, like the the year uh, Aaron uh, Cappy graduated from college, right? Exactly. I and don't have. They didn't this. unearth my pet dog at Badlands National Park, by the way. If we're going to do the age <laughs> but, battle here, I want to preface this that in Star Trek, if you watch with a red pill lens, you will watch and you will see everything from semen retention no fap and the <laughs> effects of it and you will actually watch in this clip what an actual matriarchy is capable of and the cruelty that it will exhibit on planet vulcan which is a matriarchy and uh you will also notice that women are treated as property in a matriarchy and mm. how this is done when men are deprived from sex for long periods of time so <sighs> let's watch this preview from a muck time. <laughs> <Lord> comes prepared <laughs> Captain's log, stardate 3372.7. First officer Spock seems to be under stress. If I learn anything from you, I'll ask for it! If you don't get him to Vulcan within a week, eight days at the outside, he'll die. I await you. Who is she? My wife. Now, Porter is on the challenge. They will choose thy champion. This one. This combat oh, is to the Dead. Andrew Tate and Seiko I mean. fighting over Pearly. All day. <laughs> Did you see John? He uh, was a purple belt in Brazilian uh, Jiu Jitsu in 1967. Uh, it has everything. It has <laughs> everything. It almost looked real. And, My and, God, the technology is amazing. And, and think about it. Do you see what happens with the incels when there's no access to the moon? <laughs> right. <sighs> I love the part. He's like, my wife. <laughs> and, and, and Kirk's like, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> really? <laughs> that is a brilliant episode. If you guys watch that with your red pill lands and just, I thought it, you were gay. Damn interesting. And then you realize, you know, you look at Kirk. Here he is, this guy that's not only this guy's friend, he's trying to get him laid. The guy kind of <laughs> betrays him. <laughs> and bar, and get the now I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> it's the blood burn, the Vulcan blood burning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the heat. <laughs> <laughs> but Kirk comes across as a transformational leader, which, you know, if you know anything about the leader types, this is the inspirational guy. He really does. He's open to new thinking. His, you know, mm -hmm. he he's committed to his people. He actively listens. While they say he's very emotional, he's actually very controlled and stoic. If you look through these episodes as they tell these morality tales. Well, he's literally and the 50s Western. Passionate. Yeah, yeah. That exactly. was the point of this. That's why mm -hmm. when you're mm -hmm. talking about Clint Eastwood, Clint Eastwood was making a satire of that entire genre. Mm -hmm. So they're like kind of at odds with each other. And yet it's so loved. I mean, my dad used to tell me, oh, it's got a formula, son. And yeah. the formula is Kirk gets to kick ass. Then Kirk gets a piece of ass. And that works every time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does. I mean, it's classic storytelling, too. Like the, you know, you can still watch the I mean, granted, they're they are definitely old school sci fi, but they hold up. But they, but the, the the storytelling is like if you watch episode. The reason why that series was so so you know had developed it, later developed a cult following and then it became what it is, is because of the great storytelling. I mean, it was Gene Roddenberry, right? So he was just a consummate storyteller, and so the the uh, no, strength it, it was, chicks. well the 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 strength of the show wasn't wasn't based so much at least in the first you know first season or so wasn't so much. Uh, 
based on character development, it was all plot. Everything's action. Everything's plot. Everything has a purpose to it. Everything has a direction to it. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, episodes would carry over, but it was all, you could, you could watch a standalone episode. It was a good show and, and you knew the characters and you knew what they were about and you didn't need to know their horrible, you know, sordid past. And they had, Oh, mommy didn't love me. And I came from a broken home and, you know, I was, yeah. you, know, you know, I had daddy issues. And it's like, that's the, the plot becomes the character development. That's when, that's how women write stories. Seriously, that's how romance novels are written. Mm -hmm. It's it's, it's uh, the the plot is the character development. So this Where is really interesting. Stories, it's about the plot. It's about the story. It's about you know here's a build up, purpose, climax, aftermath, and you know is it the end? 